Hello, I'm Chelsea. I'm 27 and this is my first ever YouTube video. I'm very excited to start this. I've been thinking about doing this for quite a while, but I just never really had the balls to, but I just decided I'm just gonna throw myself in at the deep end. What's the worst that can happen? People laughing at you. Is it that deep? No, I don't think so. This channel's probably mostly gonna be about books. Also a bit of a vloggy thing. This video that you're watching now is a reading vlog. I filmed this whole video, edited it, and then realised I never had an intro, so that's what this is. <laughs> I thought it would be good to introduce myself before you watch the whole video. In this video you're gonna see me read a couple of books, actually me finding my favourite book of the year, which is very, very exciting. I filmed this a bit over Christmas, so it's a little bit dated. I'm like wrapping Christmas presents in it and everything, but I'm sure we can move past that, it's fine. <laughs> Editing this vlog, I realised it was a little bit disjointed, but it is only my first video. This is going to get better. Learning by doing. I'm just going to figure everything out as I go. But yeah, for now, thank you very much for watching my video. I'm very, very excited to get started with this. And yeah, on to the reading vlog. First ever reading update. Is everyone excited? I'm excited. Um, <laughs> as I said, I'm reading The Idiot. Uh, I'm actually quite enjoying it. I just find it quite, it's a bit tedious to read for me anyway. <laughs> not because of the story or anything, not because of the book itself, it's just the way that it's written. Not the way it's written, but the, I'll show you. So this is the first section. No, sorry, this is the first section. This is the second section, just started on page 98. Before this, wait, let me just put the, put the bookmark on. It's got anyway. Before this, as you can see, there's no chapters or anything. It's all just quite dense writing, which I feel like it fits the book because it's all about, it's all about language, linguistics, uh, the similarities and differences in different languages. So I feel like it makes sense and it probably was a choice to make it like that. Uh, I'm just finding it a bit harder to read. Not hard to say, but it's taking me a bit longer than usual, which is fine. I don't mind taking my time with a book if I like it. Um, but yeah, I do really like this. Hello, it is Sunday. Um, I'm about to start my Christmas wrapping and I'm very excited about it. I'm gonna put a Christmas film on, my teddy's just above me. That's why I'm pointing that, obviously. Um, yeah, I'm gonna wrap some presents. I finished my Christmas shopping yesterday and I thought I'm gonna talk about what books I'm currently reading while I'm wrapping my presents uh, because I just started another one a couple of days ago. So yeah, so that's what I'm gonna be doing. Honestly, I've got no idea if I'm even in shot right now, but we're just gonna go with it. So look how cute these Christmas cards are that I got. Obviously TK Maxx. I love them, I think they're really cute. So the other day I started reading, I think it's called Reprieve, I'm pretty sure. And it's literary horror, which is right up my alley, that's what I love. Uh, and it's, well, I literally only just started, I'm not really very far into it. And I don't even know that much about the premise, which I quite like, I like going into a book completely blind sometimes. Just, yeah, not knowing anything about it. Um, and, what I do know about it is that it's this group of friends, I think. They go into this uh, haunted house, but it's like a full contact uh, haunted house. So the actors in the haunted house are actually allowed to touch you and like, yeah, do things to you. That sounds like something I would actually love to do. So they go into this haunted house. There's quite a big cash prize at the end of the haunted house. So if you complete all the uh, rooms, you get a cash prize, but I think only one group has done it before. Like, all the other ones have, um, haven't done it, haven't been able to finish it. They've also, I think they get a safe word. So if one of the people in the group say reprieve, it stops, like they finish, like they're not going to win the money. They get let out of the haunted house, basically. In the beginning of the book, you find out there's, uh, there was a murder and I think the last room, where I put my tape? Uh, let me just try and find that one sec. So in the beginning of the book, you find out there, there's been a murder in the last room. I think it's part of the group that we're reading about. I'm not exactly sure yet. 
the thing is, <laughs> I'm reading this book on my e-reader and I'm reading it before bed. I like to read on my e-reader before bed because it's really like, it's easy and you don't have to have the lights on, you don't really have to hold up your book. First world problems, but I like doing that. Because I'm reading it before bed, it's all a bit hazy. I can't remember everything because obviously I'm always about to fall asleep. I'm like half awake, half sleeping already when I'm reading it. So my memory of it is a little bit fuzzy, which is a bit annoying because I do actually think this book is something that I could really like. So I need to pay more attention basically and read more when I'm awake. You find out there was a murder. I think it's someone off that group that we're uh, reading about has been murdered. And yeah, but that's not all there is to it. I'm pretty sure. I think it's also, sorry, this is really loud and annoying. I think there's also themes of race and sexuality within this book. I think you get the backstories of all the characters that are going through this haunted house. Um, yeah, from what I've seen on Goodreads, I think it's not just a horror story. It's also about race and sexuality and other topics, which I like. I like a horror book that's not just jump scares or gore or something like that. Or, yeah, just a typical horror I like when there's something more going on and broader conversations to be had. So yeah, I'm still reading The Idiot, still very much enjoying it. Not very fun to it though, uh, but yeah. I like the writing, it's very, I describe it as observing. You really feel like you're there with Celine and there's not a lot going on, but I love that. This woman's just, she's just going to class, writing these emails to this boy, thinking about this boy and just yeah learning languages and I love it I don't know why it's very relatable to me even though I'm not I've not had any of these experiences having but still like I'm right there with her and I love that uh so yeah I'm gonna probably continue reading this later on in the day but for now I'm just going to watch my Christmas movie and continue wrapping these presents I think this could still be a contender for one of the best books of the year, 2020. I think when this video is going to go out, it's already going to be 2022. Did I just say 2020, 2021? I meant obviously. It's all just a big blur. <laughs> I meant 2021. Um, but I think I'm going to do a video of my favourite books of 2021. And I think this could still just about make it in there. I'm actually loving this so much. I'm about a third of the way through, I'd say. I thought this was going to be completely different from what it's actually turned out to be. I thought this was going to be like a horror book. I thought this was going to be all about the haunted house, like what the people, like what the team or the group that are going through it, what they're experiencing, like all, yeah, just the horror of it. I thought that's what the this uh, whole book was going to be. But it's completely different. <laughs> Um, the amount of things we're getting from the haunted house, it's just very small. The amount is very small, which I don't mind. I just thought it was going to be different, but I don't mind this. It's quite tense though. Everything that you do get from the haunted house, so you, that um, the group's going through all these different cells. I think there's six in total, and they have to find envelopes in all of them. I believe I'm only on cell two at the moment. This is the chapter that I'm going to start reading in a minute. Uh, chapter no sorry cell two um but most of the book is more about the characters it's more about um the backstories of all the characters how they're all connected i'm guessing i think that's what what's gonna happen and basically how the like what the lead up to them going to this haunted house is and uh, why they go in there. So I love that. <laughs> I love all of that. I love an interconnected story. I love um, when you can when you're basically thrown into a situation in the book, and then afterwards you get the backstory. You kind of get the lead up to the main event. Um, that's my jam. I love that in a book. I'm gonna just 
continue reading a bit now before I go to work and I'll probably update you next when either I've finished the book or when I'm a bit further into it so yes I've just come on here to show you my new favorite cup slash mug let's see how cute I love this color so much it's perfect for like one cup of coffee it's just I love it how cute honey me and my sister call each other hun ironically so I thought it's fitting but I love the color I like that it doesn't have a handle either it's just very it sits well in your hand that's everything I wanted to say I just finished reprieve and I think this is my favorite book of the year I'm so surprised <laughs> honestly this was a bit of an underdog not because of the book itself but just because it kind of slipped in just at the end but this was so good I can't remember the last time I updated this video on how far into the book I was at that point but I thought this was going to be a horror novel which is really not um it's more of a literary thriller social commentary it comments a lot on sexuality and race and we get a lot of the backstory of all the characters and how the team that actually eventually goes into the haunted house how it forms how these people know each other because it's not an already formed friendship group these people mostly don't know each other and we find out how they come together and how they end up all being there at the haunted house and going through it it was so cleverly written and all the little not not twist and turns but just how all these storylines intersect i love that so much it's kind of like we get a countdown because in the beginning you know that one of the teammates has been murdered in the second to last room or the last room and we get a bit of a countdown of all the events that took place leading up to his murder the horror actually takes up quite a small percentage of this book when we actually go through the rooms with these characters it is very very tense they have to in each of the rooms find a certain amount of envelopes um to proceed to the next room and eventually to win this well it's kind of an escape room slash haunted house um at the end they win the 60k cash prize i believe um I think I've already said all of this, but I'm just so excited about this book. I love it so much. And I think the best part about this book is seeing everything that led up to it and how we ended up there. This was basically my perfect book because it was scary, it was tense. Um, add into that the social commentary. Um, perfect. I loved it. Five out of five. It was so, so, so good. I loved it so much. I'm so happy that I read this. Hello. I just wanted to give you one last reading update for this vlog because I think it's already getting quite long. So I'm going to end it here in a minute. <laughs> um, I just wanted to give you one last reading wrap up for now. I'm still physically reading The Idiot. I feel like I've not talked about this at all. I'm not really sure, but I don't know if I have. That's because I've been reading it for so long. Let me actually see how long I've been reading it for. I've been reading it since December 2nd and it feels that way. Today is actually New Year's Day, so I've been reading it for four weeks on and off because I finished a couple of uh, books in between, mostly either ebooks or audiobooks. But yeah, it feels that way. It feels like I've been reading it for four weeks. I am probably like 60 ish percent through, I'd say. And the thing is, I really like it. <laughs> I just find it quite tedious to read because it's quite. I'll show you. There's not a lot of paragraph breaks at all. Like this whole book is like this. It's very dense. But I think that's the only reason why it's taken me so long because I do love the story. I love the way that it's written. I love the narrative, I love everything about it. It's just taking me some time, which is fine. I don't mind that. I feel like I do get a lot more from a book if I really, really take my time with it, which makes sense. So this book is about Celine, who's a student at Harvard. Um, she's Turkish, but I think she was born in America, if I remember correctly. Um, and she, yeah, this is her first year at Harvard. She signs up to all these classes that she doesn't really know much about. 
and she meets all new people, has new experiences. In one of the classes, she meets this boy called Ivan, and they don't really talk a lot at all, but they end up writing each other these emails, and she basically falls in love with him through these emails. <laughs> I think it's pretty obvious that she's not actually in love with him, but she thinks she's in love with him. She's very enamored by him. And I actually just read the um, Goodreads review of Roxanne Gay for this book. And there's one sentence where I just thought, this is exactly what I thought about Ivan. Um, oh, here it is. Um, Ivan is trash, utter trash, and the way he was written to show how terrible and irresistible he was, well, just bravo. That's exactly how I feel about Ivan. He's obviously such a fuckboy. He's the, the fuckboy before there was the term of fuckboy. He's like the fuckboy blueprint. Because this is set in 1995, so obviously there wasn't such a thing as a fuckboy, but... The thing is, though, if I met this guy, I would also have a crush on him. And I know that is wrong, but still. But it's not just about that, and it's not just about her relationship to Ivan. It's also a lot about language. Actually, what I found really interesting is in the beginning of the book, I think she's in a class somewhere, they talk about this idea that if you speak multiple languages and if you think in different languages, if you think differently, and I've thought about this a lot because I'm bilingual as well, I speak German and English. Um, I always think if the way that I speak and think in either of the languages, if it's different, and I do think it is. She also says in the book that she thinks that's true. And it really made me think a lot about, yeah, the way that we think the way that we speak in different languages and if our experience is different in different languages. It's very, very interesting. That's one thing I loved about this book, the conversation about language. Um, but it's also about travel. She, at the end of the school year, she goes to Hungary, which is where Ivan's from. <laughs> um, I think she mostly goes there because that's where he's from and he was the one that suggested her going there and she goes there to teach English to, I think, in a Hungarian school. I'm not really, that's the part where I'm at right now, which is just arrived to Hungary. Um, and the programme is led by one of Ivan's friends, so it's all very centred around him. That's where I'm at right now. And I think I'm going to finish this either today or tomorrow. I'm really going to commit to it because I'm ready to start a new physical book. So the other thing that I'm reading is, well, I've always got three books on the go most of the time. Got one physical book, one ebook, and one audio book to read. <laughs> um, the ebook that I'm reading right now is This Thing Between Us, which I only really picked this up because this came up as similar books or suggested books to Reprieve on Goodreads. Uh, obviously, because I love Reprieve so much, if this is similar to it, there's a good chance that I also really like this. It's also classified as horror. It's about this guy who loses his wife. I'm not very far into it at this moment, like about 10%. Uh, so I haven't really got much to say about it, but it's about this guy who loses his wife. Um, I don't really know the circumstances yet, but at the funeral, there were news cameras. So it must've been something about the ordinary. I'm not really sure about that yet, but um, at the moment, it's just about him grieving. Uh, from what I've gathered, he moves away to grieve his wife basically by himself. I think he just wants to be away from everyone. He's quite annoyed by everyone trying to console him. And yeah, he moves away to this cabin, I believe. And there's also a kind of a smart speaker device involved, like a an Alexa or like a Google Dot. Um, and weird things start to happen with that thing. I think that's where the horror aspect comes into it. But as I said, I'm not really far into it, so I've not gotten to any of that part yet. At the moment, I'm just at the part where he's still grieving, hasn't moved away or anything yet. But so far, so good. I like the atmosphere. I think it could be a good contender for a book that I like. <laughs> um, and audiobook wise, I just started listening to Paul by Daisy Lafarge the other day. 
um, I'm about 25% into that, I think. So about, yeah, a quarter of, a way, of the way into that. Paul is about a girl named Frances and she's a student and she ends up volunteering in France for the summer and she initially goes to Paris, but because of her breakup or I don't know if it was a boyfriend or just like a situation ship, she leaves Paris early and she goes to volunteer at this farm, which is owned by this guy named Paul, who's I think about twice her age. And um, yeah, she's meant to work there for a week. And as I said, I'm about a quarter of the way into it and they're just kind of starting to build a relationship of some sorts. I think from what I've read, they're gonna end up uh, going on a road trip through the south of France together. Um, at the moment not a lot has happened but you can kind of tell that the relationship that they're building isn't great it's not very it doesn't seem the most healthy <laughs> paul is already quite patronizing towards her i think in the book she's only 19 and he really plays into that that she's a lot younger than him than him and that she doesn't know a lot about life yet i do think the author writes tension very very well this book is very tense and makes you feel a bit uncomfortable at times but to me, that's a sign of good writing. Um, yeah, I'm very excited to finish this book. I feel like it's going to be one that I'll really end up liking. And yeah, that's everything I'm reading at the moment. Uh, before I finish this vlog, because it is January 1st, I feel like I should, or I want to, do my reading stats. I love reading other people's reading stats. What they've read, how much they read, which genres they read. That's like my favourite thing to watch. <laughs> so I'm going to do that, but I think I'm going to sit down for that because I need my laptop and everything. So I'll see you in a sec. All right, let's go. Reading stats 2021. Um, peep the pleasing jumper, if you know, you know. <laughs> I have read 67 books this year. I always set my reading goal to 52, which is about a book a week. Not about it, it's a book a week. <laughs> that seems right to me. That feels like what I read. Obviously, I always end up reading a bit more. Um, but 52 seems good. Feels like I'm not putting any pressure on myself to read more. It just feels like my sweet spot. The shortest book I read was Mr. Salary by Sally Rooney. 33 pages. That's obviously just one of her short stories. I really liked it though. Um, but I've not really got much to say about it. Firstly, because I read it so long ago. Second of all, because it was so short. <laughs> The longest book I read at 706 pages was Imaginary Friend by Stephen Chabowski. I actually really liked this until I got to the end. <laughs> All the lead up, the whole story, I loved everything. I loved the setup, I loved the premise. Um, the end kind of ruined it a bit. I don't want to say ruined because it wasn't a bad book. I think I still gave it four stars, but Let's just say if the ending would have been different, I maybe would have enjoyed it a bit more. My average book length was 325 pages, which seems about right. The most popular book I read was Perks of Being a Wallflower. I read this again for nostalgic reasons. <laughs> the first time I read this, oh God, I can't remember, I know exactly where I read it. It was when me and my family all went to England together and we had like a rental car and I read it in the car. But I can't remember what year that was. I don't know. Probably about 10 years ago. Um, actually more than that. We don't know. The least popular book I read, which was shelved by 132 people, is called Shy. I actually read this as a net galley arc, an arc if people don't know, is an advanced reader's copy. Basically, you read a book before it comes out in exchange for a review. Um, this book, I actually quite like this, it was very interesting to me because it's about being shy, introverts, um, what power being shy can also hold. Um, yeah, it was a good book. My average rating for 2021 was 3.5 stars. I actually stopped rating books at the end of this year. I just don't see the point in it for me at all. <laughs> Even though 
the rating of a book on Goodreads for me holds so much power. It determines if I read a book or not, which is so stupid. And I do really want to get away from that next year, this year actually. Um, but that's why I stopped rating books. I just didn't, I feel like there was just no rhyme or reason to it anymore for me. I didn't know why I was rating a book three stars and rating the next one four stars. It's just so subjective. So I just stopped doing it. But will I still read, uh, will I still rate a book five stars if I really love it? Yes. I will any day. I'm just going to share the love and not the hate. My highest rated book on Goodreads was Hail Mary, yeah, sorry, Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. This doesn't surprise me, I know that everyone loved this book. I've watched so many end of year wrap up favourite books of the year by so many people and so many people included this book for good reason. I loved it. That was Goodreads. I also use Storygraph now. I want to completely get away from using Goodreads because I don't think Mr. Bezos needs any more money from anyone. What I really like about Storygraph though is that you get these little pie charts like this and they're really cute. And I feel like with Storygraph you also get an insight to different things. I feel like Goodreads is just these other stone cold facts. But with Storygraph, they make these little cute pie charts with all these different colours, very nice to look at. And they're like, these are the moods that your books were. This is the pace that your books were. This is the page number. I just, it's just, I like it. It's very pleasing to me. So my moods were mostly reflective. That's the green, the sage green, very on trend, that colour. The big part. 35 books were reflective. Then second to that, emotional and dark and mysterious. That makes sense to me. A lot of the books that I read, I feel like are reflective. I don't know what that says about me. Next up, we've got pace. Uh, most of the books, 65% were medium pace, 25% slow and 15% fast paced. I thought there'd be more slow books than this. I don't read anything fast paced. Fast paced books are just not my kind of thing. Do I still like to complain about a book being slow? Yes. Do I still pick up a slow book all the time? Yes. Most of my books were 300 to 499 pages long. Yeah, that makes sense. 77% fiction, 23% non-fiction. This is actually something that I do want to change this year. I do want to read more non-fiction. I want to get maybe like a 65 35 split instead of 77 23. next up is genres i'm actually quite surprised by this my most read genre is contemporary with 23 books and then literary i thought it was the other way around i thought i read more literary fiction than contemporary fiction but then i looked and a lot of the books that are listed as contemporary are also listed as literary i think um, yeah, then there's thrillers, memoir, that all makes sense to me. And that is everything. These are my reading stats. Is this interesting for anyone apart from me? Probably not. On that note, I'm actually going to go and end this vlog. I feel like it's going to be actually quite long, which I'm not sure how I feel about. I like a long, long vlog. I like watching them. Do I like making them? Thank you very much for watching my first ever YouTube video. I've already filmed another one, which is going to come probably in a few days. We'll see. It's going to be my, uh, my favourite books of 2021. Yes. Okay. Goodbye. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.